Certainly not. No way. This is nothing but a malicious false accusational propaganda garbage trash and rubbish phrase that has nothing but brainwashed generations of people. First I'd like tossed it that my roots actually go back to England. So I feel that it's really a good position for me to take in talking about this. Here's what happened. King James I of England, whom God used to give the now famous King James Bible to us, was considered by many to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, monarchs that England has ever seen. Through his wisdom and determination he united the warring tribes of Scotland into one nation, and then joined England and Scotland to form the foundation for what is now known as the British Empire. At a time when only the churches of England possessed the Bible in English, King James' desire was that the common people should have the Bible in their native tongue. So that's what happened in 1603, when King James called 54 of history's most learned men together to accomplish this great task. At a time when the leaders of the world wished to keep their subjects in spiritual ignorance and darkness, James offered his subjects the greatest gift that he could give them. Their own copy of the Word of God, in English. James, who was fluent in Latin, Greek and French, and schooled in Italian and Spanish, even wrote a tract entitled, Counterblast to Tobacco, which was written to help thwart the use of tobacco in England. But such an amazing man was likely to have enemies. Among the courts was one such man called Anthony Weldon, who was excluded from the courts for being nothing but quite disrespectful and foolish. And so he saw corrupt vengeance. It was not until 1650, 25 years after the death of James, that Weldon saw his chance. And he was the one who wrote a whole paper blackmailing James as a homosexual and pedophile. Obviously James was not able to defend himself since he was already gone. But this counterfeit Weldon report was largely ignored anyway since there were still people alive who knew it was a deliberate slanderous lie. In fact it lay dormant for years as time went on, until recently when it was picked up by simple-minded Christians who hoped that vilifying King James would tarnish the Bible that bears his name, so that Christians would turn away from God's book to a more modern translation. It seems though, that Weldon's false account is being once again largely ignored by the majority of Christianity with the exception of those with an ulterior motive, such as its author had. So was King James a homosexual? God forbid. No way. Absolutely not. Far from it. It might also be mentioned here that Catholicism was so desperate to keep the true Bible out of the hands of the English people that it attempted to kill King James and all of Parliament in 1605 when a Roman Catholic by the name of Guy Fox under the direction of a Jesuit priest by the name of Henry Garnet was found in the basement of Parliament with 36 barrels of gunpowder which he was to use to blow up King James and the entire parliament. They planned after killing the king, on imprisoning his children, re-establishing England as a state loyal to the Caesar Pope, and kill all who resisted. Needless to say the perfect English Bible would have been one of the plot's victims. These men, Fox and Garnet, and eight other conspirators were caught and hanged. It seems that those who work so hard to discredit the character of King James join an unholy lot. I'm so glad that the Lord is truly a God of truth and justice.